Chapter Seven: True Love or Infatuation. Love is a precious gift, which we receive from Jesus. Pure and holy affection is not a feeling, but a principle. Those who are actuated by true love are neither unreasonable nor blind. There is but little real, genuine, devoted, pure love. This precious article is very rare. Passion is termed love. True love is a high and holy principle. Altogether different in character from that love which is awakened by impulse, and which suddenly dies when severely tested. Love is a plant of heavenly growth, and it must be fostered and nourished. Affectionate hearts, truthful, loving words will make happy families, and exert an elevating influence upon all who come within the sphere. Of their influence, love is not unreasonable; it is not blind; it is pure and holy. But the passion of the natural heart is another thing altogether. While pure love will take God into all its plans, and will be in perfect harmony with the Spirit of God, passion will be headstrong, rash, unreasonable. Defiant of all restraint, and will make the object of its choice an idol. In all the department of one who possesses true love, the grace of God will be shown. Modesty, simplicity, sincerity, morality, and religion will characterize every step toward an alliance in marriage. Those who are thus controlled will not be absorbed in each other's society, at a loss of interest in the prayer meeting and the religious service. Their fervor for the truth will not die on account of the neglect of the opportunities and privileges that God has graciously given to them. That love which has no better foundation than mere sensual gratification will be headstrong, blind. And uncontrollable, honor, truth, and every noble, elevated power of the mind are brought under the slavery of passions. The man who is bound in the chains of this infatuation is too often deaf to the voice of reason and conscience. Neither argument nor entreaty can lead him to see the folly of his course. True love is not a strong, fiery, impetuous passion. On the contrary, it is calm and deep in its nature. It looks beyond mere externals and is attracted by qualities alone. It is wise and discriminating, and its devotion is real and abiding. Love. Lifted out of the realm of passion and impulse, becomes spiritualized and is revealed in words and acts. A Christian must have a sanctified tenderness and love in which there is no impatience or fretfulness. The rude, harsh manners must be softened by the grace of Christ. Imagination, lovesick sentimentalism, should be guarded against, as would be the leprosy. Very many of the young men and women in this age of the world are lacking in virtue. Therefore, great caution is needed. Those who have preserved a virtuous character, although they may lack in other desirable qualities, may be of real moral worth. There are persons who have, for some time, made a profession of religion, who are, to all intents and purposes, without God, and without a sensitive conscience. They are vain and trifling. Their conversation is of a low order. Courtship and marriage occupy the mind to the exclusion 
of higher and nobler thoughts. The young are bewitched with a mania for courtship and marriage. Lovesick sentimentalism prevails. Great vigilance and tact are needed to guard the youth from these wrong influences. Daughters are not taught self-denial and self-control. They are petted and their pride is fostered. They are allowed to have their own way until they become headstrong and self-willed and you are put to your wit's end to know what course to pursue to save them from ruin. Satan is leading them on to be a proverb in the mouth of unbelievers because of their boldness, their lack of reserve and womanly modesty. The young boys are likewise left to have their own way. They have scarcely entered their teens before they are by the side of little girls of their own age, accompanying them home and making love to them. And the parents are so completely in bondage through their own indolence and mistaken love for their children that they dare not pursue a decided course to make a change and restrain their too fast children in this fast age. Counsel to a romantic, lovesick girl. You have fallen into the sad error which is so prevalent in this degenerate age, especially with women. You are too fond of the other sex. You love their society. Your attention to them is flattering and you encourage or permit a familiarity which does not always accord with the exhortation of the apostle to abstain from all appearance of evil. Turn your mind away from romantic projects. You mingle with your religion a romantic lovesick sentimentalism, which does not elevate but only lowers. It is not yourself alone who is affected. Others are injured by your example and influence. Daydreaming and romantic castle building have unfitted you for usefulness. You have lived in an imaginary world. You have been an imaginary martyr and an imaginary Christian. There is much of this low sentimentalism mingled with the religious experience of the young in this age of the world. My sister, God requires you to be transformed. Elevate your affections, I implore you. Devote your mental and physical powers to the service of your Redeemer who has bought you. Sanctify your thoughts and feelings that all your works may be wrought in God. Caution to a youthful student. You are now in your student's life. Let your mind dwell upon spiritual subjects. Keep all sentimentalism apart from your life. Give to yourself vigilant self-instruction and bring yourself under self-control. You are now in the formative period of character. Nothing with you is to be considered trivial or unimportant which will detract from your highest holiest interest, your efficiency in the preparation to do the work God has assigned you. Results of unwise courtship and marriage. We can see that innumerable difficulties meet us at every step. The iniquity that is cherished by young as well as old, the unwise, unsanctified courtship and marriages cannot fail to result in bickerings, in strife, in alienations, in indulgence of unbridled passions, in unfaithfulness of husbands and wives, unwillingness to restrain the self-willed, inordinate desires, and in indifference to the things of eternal interests. The holiness of the oracles of God is not loved by very many who claim to be Bible Christians. They show by their free, loose conduct that they prefer a wider scope. They do not want their selfish indulgences limited. Gird up the loins of your mind, says the apostle. Then control your thoughts, not allowing them to have full scope. The thoughts may be guarded and controlled by your own determined efforts. Think right thoughts, and you will perform right actions. You have, then, to guard the affections, not letting them go out and fasten upon improper objects. 
Jesus has purchased you with his own life. You belong to him. Therefore, he is to be consulted in all things as to how the powers of your mind and the affections of your heart shall be employed.